The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 885. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. You can now purchase the Tao of Self-Confidence, a guide to moving beyond trauma and awakening the leader within on Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, Walmart, Indigo, and other major book retailers. Get your copy today. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yap Chan, and today I have a phenomenal woman on the show today. She is the Supplier Diversity Manager for Adobe, and I'm super excited to have her on to share her story with us on self-confidence. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Kathleen Wong. Kathleen, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to the listeners. Yeah, thank you, Sheena, for having me. A little bit more about myself. Yeah, I was definitely interested in your show and hearing about all of the stories that women bring to the table and especially sharing mine for the first time. I'm a relatively new manager to the Adobe to Adobe, but I've been at this company for about 12 years now and have really kind of evolved my tenure here to to work through some of the challenges that came with coming straight out of my undergrad program into this large multinational company. So very excited to talk a little bit more about my journey to self-confidence. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And Kathleen, what's your cultural background? Uh, My cultural background is Chinese American. My grandmother immigrated to the U.S. And actually, that's a pretty fun story in 2019, I did a journey to China to visit her village and do a lot of genealogy research. So just really wanted to touch on my cultural background and and learn a little bit more about some of the challenges that she faced coming to the U.S. Made me very empathetic to kind of working hard and staying focused and really cultivating the life that she aspired to when she moved to the U.S., Thanks for sharing that. And it's amazing what happens when we, you know, go check out our family history, our family family lineage and see what they've been through. And especially like our grandmothers and great grandmothers, especially coming from back in the day, you know, they didn't they didn't have the luxury to go to school. Like I found out my great grandmother had her feet binded back in the day. And like just imagine how painful that is all for like a, a status symbol. And so being able to hear those stories, you know, it pushes also pushes me to like do something different in honor of their name because I mean they didn't have as many opportunities as we did. And so we can be that that generation to break that cycle. So thanks for sharing that. And Kathleen, what is your favorite self-confidence quote? My favorite self-confidence quote is one that I repeat to myself every time I go into a big stressful meeting. It's be bold, be brief, be gone. And if it kind of in parentheses be memorable. (laughs) So kind of say what you have to say, say it with confidence, get to the point and stand out. I love that because confidence is really just pushing through that, right? I know sometimes it's scary to go into a big meeting or, you know, having this presentation that you prep for like weeks. And sometimes there's there's just like things in, in there's just situations where we just can't control and we just got to roll with it. And then after that is not as bad as we think. So I love, I love that quote that you mentioned. And in your own words, how do you define self-confidence? It's to be the most prepared person in the room. I, I love that because I think people forget about being, being prepared. I mean, I remember doing my first, um, public speaking engagement. I mean, I memorized in front of the mirror, like a whole week straight, right? I had to do a 10 minute speech without any, any, any press like slides or cue cards. It's just literally me like speaking in front of the mirror, trying to memorize everything that I was supposed to talk about. But it really helped me because now when I do um, different speaking engagements, like I can go out there and talk about a topic without having any slides and just really share the knowledge that I've been able to learn throughout the years. So I really love that you mentioned it's about being preparedness because it's so true. Even if you look at like K-pop artists, right? Like they, they prepare for like three, four years before they even launch as a group. So 
Yeah, the training is crazy. And they start very young at like 15 or 16. So thanks for sharing that. And Kathleen, what was your life like before you discovered self-confidence? I determined that uh, kind of that moment. I don't know if there's ever a moment when you have self-confidence and you don't. So that was the piece I needed to reflect on the most. And when I joined Adobe, this big company, I was asked to pioneer our approach to supply chain social responsibility. I joined straight out of undergrad. I felt reasonably qualified. I was like, that's why they hired me, right? But I I felt imposter syndrome every step of the way and uh, managed to overcome it by being resourceful, followed a lot of our industry leaders and blogs in sustainability and diversity, and overall just kind of seeked benchmarking data to back up my program design. And, you know, I had to make myself seem smart. (laughs) I think being able to present that information back to leaders and also just having supportive mentors and managers throughout the way really helped me work through some of those challenges and self-confidence. Thanks for sharing that. And imposter syndrome is something we all go through. Every single person goes through it. We feel like we're not enough. There's someone out there who's better than us. Uh, You know, who am I to give a presentation or be awarded this position at a big corporation? And, you know, you're there for a reason, right? Because they see something in you that you could bring to the table that can help the company grow in, you know, the next 5, 10, 20 years. And, you know, especially as Asian women, right? We're, We're not taught to be confident. We're really taught to like work hard, put your head down never make any noise. But that also doesn't help us because we don't get, we're not seen as leadership. And then we don't get the promotion because all we're seen is hardworking. So, you know, I love that you're paving the way for so many Asian women out there. And, you know, what was that point in your life where you realized, you know, you can go out there and be the person that you are today, being a leader, being in an amazing position for such a big corporation? What was that aha moment? Yeah, I have uh, two aha moments. The first one happened in 2018-2019, I received Adobe's Founders Award. It's a company-wide recognition for my work in founding the Supplier Diversity Program. It was peer-nominated and reviewed, and only 12 people, roughly 12 people, receive it per year. So it was kind of that first moment where, you know, I felt like my work was recognized beyond my immediate team. And the second time was maybe about a year later, uh, I got invited to the boardroom. And in 2020, corporate diversity efforts, they were examined a lot more closely. And I I was invited to offer my proposal to the C-suite and see how the company might make some meaningful efforts to support diverse and small businesses through our purchasing strategy. Uh, And I think that, you know, just being able to to share and feel heard and even make some some asks that were approved. That was really a an aha moment for me because I was not only just being seen, but I was all, I was being heard as well. I I love that. And I love that you mentioned because you asked for it, right? You were able to get what you wanted. And I know sometimes asking for stuff is hard, right? But you know, I always say, if you don't ask, the answer is no. So even if you go out there and go for it, what's the worst that could happen? But we can also say, you know, what's the best that could happen, right? You get to be seen as a leader, people take you seriously, you're in this great position where you're creating this social change, creating more diverse workplace, diverse environment, because there's been reports, you know, that say like, when you have a diverse workplace, or, you know, yeah, diverse workplace worth ethic, uh, everything goes up productivity, margin, the environment, everything goes up. So I love what you're doing. And congrats to winning those awards. That's so awesome. You are basically just paving the way for so many Asian women out there to be seen to be heard to realize that they can also be in positions like these for big corporations. And because of that realization, what's your life been like now? Well, thank you for for recognizing that this work certainly takes courage. And I kind of stand on the shoulders of all of the supplier diversity leaders and mentors who who came before me and gave me that confidence. So I, I certainly feel like those moments were validating in my journey. And every success after that, I grew my confidence. And I began to see myself not just as a participant in this work, but as a leader that meaningfully contributes to initiatives that align with my values, with the values of the company, 
and it translated to such impacts. So I'm here to advocate for that change, to champion our new ideas, to collaborate with diverse voices like yours and others, and really have that foundation to, to bring as the foundation to my confidence. Awesome. And thanks for sharing that. And I love that, you know, we, we can work together to create the changes we want to see in the world. Uh, one of the reasons why we're, we're part of the U.S. PAC WISE program is because we want to collaborate with other women, different voices, be able to uh, work together for better change for so many people out there. So I love that you mentioned that, you know, you also had mentors along the way support because culturally we've always been told never to ask for help because it's seen as a sign of weakness or a handout, but Together, we can create the big changes we want to see. So I love that. And Kathleen, to the woman who's listening to your episode, she may be in her own journey to self-confidence. What would be that one tip you'd give to her? Yeah, I think that one, the one tip I would give to her is to to really prepare, uh, strive to be the most prepared person in any room or situation. And, you know, learn from that preparation, just ref- have that, a lot of reflection if things don't go the way that uh, are planned, uh, because that happens. And every, uh, be comfortable with that failure, because the failure is really a building block to confidence. As long as you get another chance, you can always give it another try. I love that. And thank you for your analogy on failure, because I know failure sometimes seems like it's the end of everything, right? It's the end of the world. We can't come back out of it. But really, failure is just uh, a stepping stone to the next level, right? We learn from it, we can course correct, and then we can move forward. And, you know, the more we can see failure that way, it's not bad. It's just part of the process. You know, whatever we do in life is not always going to be a hundred percent. It's not always going to be a win, but we can always learn from it to, to move to the next, next step or next level. So thanks for sharing that. And if our listeners wanted to get to know a little bit more about you and what you do and check out some of the programs you've created with Adobe, is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with? You can always connect with me on my LinkedIn it's linkedin.com and the handle is Kathleen Wong, number one. And I, I hope to be a little more active on my LinkedIn channel. So keep me accountable for that one. Thank you so much, Kathleen. We'll definitely connect with you on LinkedIn. And if you want to connect with Kathleen, you can also head on over to the TaoSelfConfidence.com and search for Kathleen's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else that we talked about. And I just really want to thank Kathleen today for taking the time to share her story with us on self-confidence. So thank you so much, Kathleen. You're welcome. It was great speaking with you. It was also such an honor to speak with you today. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of Another Amazing Woman's Journey to Self-Confidence. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of The Tao of Self-Confidence. You can order your copy of Asian Women Who Boss Up Book by visiting our website at thetowofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits.